Today I need to replace fuel filter on uh, Pratt & Whitney 1100G engine which belongs to our NEO aircrafts and of course I would like to show you how to do that and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the fuel system so let's take a look at it let's start with the fun curls and sea ducts opening the fun curls on the NEO are spring-loaded so immediately whenever you open three latches uh, they will gonna pop or they will push away and then you will just lift it up and one of the rods will engage then you will install the second one the other side as well uh, before we'll open the uh, sea ducts we need to deactivate thrust reversers hydraulic control unit like this and whenever it is the lever is set like this it's an in inhibited mode and yeah now we can safely open the sea ducts i already pulled the cbs for the slots i deactivate the slots so we can open reversers or sea duct we need to start with latch number five which is here on the core and then we need to go down we need to start with number four three then pls that's a lock two and one Actually one is made out of two, but yeah. And now the sea ducts are free. So we'll pick up the pump and we can open it. So now we can lower we can engage the support strut and now we just need to pump it up and whenever it will extend to the lock position it will automatically lock yes you see the green band that means that it's secured so we can release the pressure and it will rest only on the support strut so we can remove the pump and we can proceed with the filter this is a core of the Pratt & Whitney engine and this is our fuel unit, fuel pump and fuel metering unit and our filter is up here it holds uh, on the position thanks to or it's secured only by this ratchet locker which you just need to push now it is disengaged and uh, this fuel filter bowl should be tight only it should be only hand tight so I should be able to remove it only by hand so let's see yep it's going but it's first of all it's hot and it's hard so okay okay it's going now a few moments later it's a very long thread So this is our bowl and filter. So 
so we need of course inspect the filter if there are no particles or some metallic debris and yep then we'll proceed with the installation of the new one when I inspect this one on the filter itself we can find two rings one is inside of here and the other one is on the outer surface and the next one you can find inside of the housing this one we need to remove it and we need to replace it the important thing is that this is check valve whenever you will push this check valve the fuel will start to flow out so uh, really follow the mm which says put the filter in the bowl in the cover and install it with it because whenever you put filter there and you try to push it in you will get fuel leak and for sure you don't want that so follow the mm so here we have our old o-ring goes to the trash this is our new one so we need to lubricate it and we can install it in uh, of course we'll then lubricate the o-rings on the new filter and then we will assemble it together okay we can install the o-ring just lubricate it so in the so o-ring is inside now we lubricate the filter o-rings as i said we need to put it in the bowl yeah. and then we put it on and just slowly push it in as you can see fuel is already inside of the bowl so whenever you will try to pull it out there will be again fuel and ratchet is set on already So safety mechanism is only this ratchet, you don't need to secure it and yeah, whenever it's tight, it's tight. Okay, now we're gonna clean it. We are good for the test, so we pack everything. We will close CDEX and we'll perform a run-up and then again we need to uh, open it, inspect it. So let me show you how to close the CDEX on the NEO. First of all, we'll install the hose on the actuator. Oh. Then we remove the pressure from the strut let me bring it a bit closer uh, it's really heavy this one so whenever you, have, you release the pressure from the support strut we can remove it and we can drop the sea duct and we will stow it up here okay 
since it's closed, we can remove our pump. So we need to start with the forward latches, but as you can see, they're really far away from each other. So for that, we have here device which will bring the C ducts closer together. So we're gonna engage it. And now we're gonna use French to bring it closer together. It of course takes some time. Same device you can find on uh, uh, V2500. Need to perform the same procedure there. Okay, perfect. Now it engaged. So we can close the clutch L1, A and B. Meanwhile, we can store this device, a little bit extend. So, it's stowed. Then, we continue with L2, then BLS. Then we continue with number three, four. So that's all on the bottom side. And we move to last one, which is up here, number five. And that was uh, that was the last one. Okay, so let's activate the hydraulic unit. And yeah, we can close the funkels. Funkels are quite far away from each other because they're spring loaded. So you can grab it, grab them with your knees and then close it. Easy as that. Uh, we don't have the funkel key on those uh, latches because uh, they're monitored. Those latches are monitored. So if you leave the latches uh, open, you will find the uh, indication on the ecam. So that's why you don't need to have a key for those funkos. It is. PV engine on NIO has one special feature which is called bow rotor protection. And what does it mean? EEC keeps the M2 speed at low value, approximately 10%. From the outside you can hear only noise, but fan is not turning. Duration of this feature is calculated based on time since shutdown, outside air temperature and engine turbine temperature. During this motoring to start procedure, cooling and remaining time indication is displayed on upper ECAM. When the motoring to start period is complete, indication will disappear and EC will continue to normal engine start. And this of course brings problems, especially when you have a failure on the starter valve and you need to open it manually because you are not able to simulate this bow rotor protection and that's why you need to wait certain period of time which you will find on MCDU. This time is calculated thanks to data which EEC received and if you decide to not follow this procedure you can cause major damage to the engine. Whenever you will find uh, information that start valve can be manually open, you can perform this override procedure. That was few information on the startup procedure. Meanwhile, our engine reached idle, so now we need to wait five minutes, then we switch it off, and after we'll take a look on our filter if there is no leak. Leak check is done, or engine run has been performed. As you can see, no leak. So we can uh, close 
engine and all the remaining is paperwork. Okay, this is uh, all about fuel filter on uh, PV1100G, which belongs to A320. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer to you. Uh, as always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for the maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. That's all from my side. Uh, thank you for your time. My name is Tomasz. This was Circular Maintenance with Zeto. And I'll see you next one. Bye.